Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of a gold medallion coin portrait, including text that wraps around the perimeter of the coin. This is an update of tutorials I've done many years ago on much earlier versions of Photoshop. I provided a template for you to download so you can follow along. Its link is in my video's description or project files. It includes this base image and an alpha channel that we'll use later. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I upload new ones every week. Open a photo of a subject that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. I suggest using a profile of a head since they're mainly used on coins. To ensure that your results will look similar to mine, make its resolution 150 pixels per inch. To check it, go to Image and Image Size. If it's not already 150 pixels per inch, type it in, and when the width and height changes, make sure the chain link icon is active, and then in either field, type in anywhere from 800 to 1200 pixels. We need to make a selection around the head so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, let's use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using CC 2018 or later, click the Select Subject button. This automatically detects your subject and makes a selection around it. It works generally well, but it's not perfect. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2018, drag your Quick Selection tool over your subject to select it. If you need to remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Go to Select. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, click Refine Edge. If you're using a later version, click Select and Mask. If you prefer to use Refine Edge, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you want to watch them, I provided their links as well. The Radius and Smooth are both 0, the Feather is 3, the Contrast is 100, and the Shift Edge is minus 10. Check Decontaminate Colors. This prevents the background tones from leaching inside the outer edge of our subject. Drag it to 100%. Output it to a new layer. If your subject has this much space or less around it, we should reduce the size of our subject so we have more space around it. To do this, press Ctrl or Command T to open your Transform tool and go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in so you have approximately this much space around it. If you're using a later version, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. To center it, go inside the bounding box and drag your subject to position it. Then press Enter or Return. Make a new layer below the active layer by Ctrl or Command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill it with a gray tone. Click your foreground color to open the color picker, and for its brightness, type in 65%. Its hexadecimal code is A6 three times. To fill the empty layer with the foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. We'll convert our subject into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click it to make it active, and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Surface Blur blurs an image while preserving its edges. The radius specifies the size of the area sampled for the blur, while the threshold basically controls the amount of blur. I'll make its radius and threshold 10 each. Open your elliptical marquee tool and place your cursor at the center of your subject. Press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag out a circle. The circle will determine the area of your subject will be cropped to. You can reposition the circle by adding the space bar. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the active layer. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object 
by shift clicking the gray layer to make it active as well and convert the two layers into one smart object. Click the adjustment layer icon and click black and white. Make the background copy active and go to filter and filter gallery. Open the texture folder and click grain. The grain type is soft, the intensity is 5, and the contrast is 50. We'll convert this into a smart object as well in order to modify our slightly grained black and white image non destructively. Shift click the adjustment layer to make it active as well and convert the active layers into a smart object. Press V to open your Move tool and drag your image onto the tab of the coin template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Open your Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control or Command click the Alpha 1 thumbnail to make a selection of its shape. Open back the Layers panel. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the active layer. If the gray tone is missing at the top, bottom, and sides, click the chain link icon to unlink the layer with the layer mask. This will allow us to resize and reposition either of them independently of the other. Click your subject to make it active and open your transform tool. Go to a corner and drag it out so the gray tone fills the entire section and the size and position of your subject within it is to your liking. Just make sure there's enough room for the text we'll be adding around your subject. Then press Enter or Return or click the check mark at the top. Press D on your keyboard to make your foreground and background colors default to black and white respectively. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Sketch folder and click Base Relief. The detail is 14. The smoothness is 1, and the light is from the top left. Double-click an empty area of the layer to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, the technique is Smooth, and the depth is 40%. The direction is Down, the size is 25 pixels, and the soften is zero. Use global light is unchecked. The angle is 55 degrees and the altitude is 20 degrees. The gloss contour is linear. The highlight mode is overlay. The color is white and its opacity is 60%. The shadow mode is soft light. The color is black and its opacity is also 60%. Click inner glow. The Blend Mode is Multiply, the Opacity is 30%, and the Noise is 0. If the color box isn't black, click it, and when the color picker opens, pick black. The Technique is Softer, the Source is Edge, the Choke is 0, and the Size is 10 pixels. Open the Contour List, and click the Gear icon. Click Large or Small List. Scroll to Rolling Slope Ascending and click it. If you don't see it in your list, click the gear icon again, click Contours, and OK. The range is 10%. Next, we'll give our face and background a gold color, but first, let's do a little organizing in our Layers panel. Collapse the Smart Filters to save some space. We'll place our subject into a folder by pressing Ctrl or Command G. Later, we'll be placing our text into this folder as well. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Color Balance. Right now, the adjustment layer is inside our folder. However, since we want it to ultimately affect the text in our folder as well, drag the adjustment layer above the folder. It's important to understand that adjustment layers affect all the layers below them. If we want it to affect just the one layer below it, such as the folder in this case, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to the folder. To do this, 
click the Clipping Mask icon, or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Make sure Preserve Luminosity is checked. This will retain the brightness and contrast of the tones. Open the Tone List and click Shadows. Make the Cyan Red 20, the Magenta Green 0, and the Yellow Blue minus 61. Click Midtones. In the same order, type in 74, 25, and minus 82. Click Highlights and type in 26, 25, and minus 40. Just as a side note, I experimented using the Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer to change our coin's color, but I didn't like the result. As I toggle back and forth, you can see how it flattened all the tones, whereas color balance doesn't. Lastly, we'll add our text. Click the subject to make it active, and click the New Layer icon to make a new layer above it. We'll place the top half of our text in this layer. First, let's find the exact center of our coin. Go to View, and New Guide Layout. If you have an earlier version, click New Guide, and type in 50% for the horizontal and vertical scales. In New Guide Layout for the columns and rows, type in 2 each, and keep everything else empty. Open your Ellipse tool, and at the top, choose Path. Click the gear icon, and tick Proportional, and check From Center. Go to the center of the guidelines, and drag out a circular path a bit past your subject. Now we can clear the guides by going to View, and Clear Guides. Open your Horizontal Type tool, and type Picker. Pick a font. I'm using Trajan Pro Regular. I'll make its size 27 points for now, but we can adjust its size once we type it in. Click the Center Alignment icon, which will center our text around the path as we type it. Go to the top center of the path, and when you see this icon, click it and type out your text. To adjust the spacing between the characters, known as tracking, drag your cursor over your text to make them active. Go to Window and Character, which opens the Character panel. Go to the Tracking Scrubby slider and drag it to the right or left. If you want to move the text toward or away from the center of the coin, drag the Baseline Shift Scrubby slider to the left or right. Next, we'll add text around the bottom of the coin. Click the Text layer to make it active, and make a new layer. Open the Paths panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Paths. Click the Work Path to activate it again, and open back the Layers panel. Go to the bottom center of the path, and again, when you see this icon, click it and type out your text. To flip it right side up, Open your Direct Selection tool, and hover your cursor over your text. When you see this icon, click and drag it up over the path until your text is right side up. To position it below the path, press T to open your Type tool, and drag it over the text. Drag the Baseline Shift Scrubby slider to the left. Then, open your Move tool. Now that we have our text in place, we'll engrave it into the coin. But first, let's place our text into a folder within the coin folder. Click the bottom text layer to make it active as well, and press Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Text. Reduce its fill to 0%. This makes our text invisible, however, it'll retain the visibility of all the layer style filters we add to it. Double-click an empty area next to the folder to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, and the technique is Chisel Hard. The depth is 100%, and the direction is Down. The size is 10 pixels, and the Soften is 0. Use Global Light is unchecked. The angle is 50 degrees, 
and the altitude is 30 degrees. The glass contour is linear, the highlight mode is screen, the color is white, and its opacity is 75%. The shadow mode is multiply, the color is black, and its opacity is 75% as well. Click drop shadow. The blend mode is multiply, and the opacity is 40%. Use global light is unchecked, and the angle is minus 140 degrees. The distance is 4 pixels, and the spread and size are both 0. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.